Hi guys, so this is a short video that's going to explain the three different types of variables, basic variables we're going to be using with our programming. The learning goal for this video is to understand the difference between the three basic variable types. Last lesson we would have explored the idea about variables being containers that we store information in. And just like in the real world we have different types of containers for different types of needs, we also, in the variable world, have different types of variables. So you can see in the images over here, we have different kind of containers for oils or for soft drink or for baked beans or trays of meat or biscuits. So a whole range of different kinds of containers. Um, the three basic containers that we're going to be looking at for variables are strings, integers and floats. And I'm going to look through each one of those now and explain what they're used for and what makes them different from each other. Okay, so the first variable type we're going to be looking at is strings. You can see up in the title there that strings is often abbreviated to STR. Now strings are a kind of container that's used to store, or a variable that stores alphanumeric num characters only. So that's the characters from A to Z, the numerals zero through to nine, and all the different types of symbols. Basically, anything you can type on the keyboard can be stored in a string variable. Um, the strings are enclosed by inverted commas. That's what, let's get this here, that's what these little things are called. So you have on one either side. So inverted commas tells the computer that the information inside this variable, the information between these inverted commas is a string. So, so don't use them as a number, don't use it as a command or, or any kind of thing else. It's, so this is a string, it's a bit of information that we're going to store and use. Um, there's a really cool little operation with strings, it's called concatenate. And it's about, effectively it's using the, the plus sign, which is here. And what it's doing is actually adding the two strings together. But it's not like you're adding two plus four, which will give you six. What it actually does is it takes the strings and just joins them and makes them into one string. So over here, we've got on the right hand side here, I've got some code that I've typed up that um, I want you to consider I've made six variables, six string variables here called name, telephone, email, day, month, and year. And their subsequent values have also been added in and assigned to them. So what we've got is three lines of code here. Um, British is going to print to the console. They're going to print the variable name. They're going to print the variable telephone. And they're going to print the variable day, concatenated with a slash sign, concatenated with month, concatenated with another slash sign, concatenated with year. So it's going to do all that. What I want you to do is take a couple of seconds before you go to the next slide and just write down what you think the console output will be because the answer is on the next slide. So write down what you think the console output will be by looking at that code. And then the next slide, we'll see if you're correct. So now you can compare your answers what you write down to what the actual console would output. So you can see here that the, the first line um, of code here, the first print line is going to print the characters John, the characters J-O-H-N. Notice it doesn't do the inverted commas. It just writes the actual, the string that's inside the inverted commas. So it's going to print telephone and the values that we have in telephone. Um, inside the inverted commas are those there. And then finally, for the date, it's going to print day is plus, so actually it prints the day, value in day, then it prints the slash sign, the value in month, slash sign, and the value in year. And that's the output that you get in console. How'd you go? Okay, the next type of variable we're going to learn about is integer numbers. Um, or int. Now integer variables, if you want, are used to store numbers, whole numbers, 1, 2, 5, 10,000, um, positive negative numbers, so negative 3, negative 20, as long as the numbers are whole numbers, so that means there's no decimal places whatsoever. Um, integers we can use a range, all the mathematical operations, um, we've got plus, minus, um, multiply, um, use brackets as well, and we can see this here, this is actually um, to the power of. So if you wanted to square something, you'd have put two asterisks to say to the power of two. Um, 
Now, division with integers is actually quite tricky because um, integers have three different types of divisions. Um, our normal division, our normal divide by, which is a single backslash, if you take a number and you, a integer and you divide it by that, it will actually create a float, which we'll learn about in a second. But it will no longer, the answer will no longer be an integer. So 5 divided by 2 with a single division will give us 2.5. Um, but that's no longer an integer because it's got a decimal place. Now, you remember back to primary school days when you used to say um, 5 divided by 2 equals 2 remainder 1. Um, so this is what the next two operations allow you to do. The double backslash um, is called the floor division. And what it actually does is it will give you the whole number. So 5 floor division 2 will return the value of 2. And this one, the percentage sign here is called modulo. And modulo... Um, will return the remainder. So 5 modulo 2 will return the value of 1. So over here, um, I have written some code. I've got three values, num1, num2, num3. And then I've got uh, two, three, four, seven possible answers here um, for the calculations using those three integer variables. So what I'd like you to do is before you go on to the next slide, before it goes to the next slide, say pause now and work out what you think this solution is going to be or what, what this code is actually going to print out. So here we have the code or the results for printing that or using that code. So, um, so num1 plus num2, which is basically um, 2 plus 10 will return 12. Um, num2 multiplied by num3, which is 10 times 3, will equal 30. Num2 minus 1, so 10 minus 2 will equal 8. Num2, 10 to the power of 2, so 10 squared will give you 100. Um, num2 divided by 3 gives you the floor. So this is the um, just the normal division. So they'll give us 3.333 recurring. So we'll give us this. Um, because it'll return the integer, because only one line is number division. Num2 floor division num3, we'll say, well, num, so which is 10 to floor division 3 is gives us 3, and then modulo, num2 modulo 3 gives us 3, or well, the remainder of 1. So that is our answers or for what that code will provide. Okay, so here we are now with floating point numbers or often referred to as float. Um, floating point numbers are used to store numbers, um, those numbers in particular with decimals. So where you got a point decimal because that's what that's what this little thing is, the little point in for our decimals is actually called a floating point. So that's why it's called a floating point number. So 0 0.1, 0 0.02, 3.1, for etc. Positive and negative numbers you can do either have a decimal point um, and all mathematical operations are open to them and just do the exact same thing as we would expect. So let's have a look here. Um, again we've got the values 2.0, 10.0 and 3.0. Notice I've written these in with our point zeros here just to let you know that they are actually float values. Um, so again, we've got our seven equations here, our seven little print statements. So um, see if you can work out what they are, pause the video, write down, jot down what you think the answers are going to be, and then press play again and see if you were correct. And so here we are. We've got um, our results here. So let's have a look. So num1 plus num2 equals 12, so 10 plus 2 equals 12, but it's 12.0, which tells you it is a float. Um, we've got 10 times 3 equals 30.0, um, 10 minus 2 equals 8.0, 10 to the power um, of, and 10 to the power of 2 is um, 100, um, 3 divided by, oh sorry, 10 divided by 3 equals 3.333 recurring, etc. And now notice we're also that our floor division and our modulo still works they still give us results but there is a point here so instead of turning three and one it returns 3.0 and 1.0 so there we are that is all of our variables or our main variables that we're going to be using